Okay, let's do it. All right, welcome back to the Inside Star Citizen Review. I'm here chilling with my fam. We had to switch over to Twitch. YouTube was giving us some troubles. I will try to go back to YouTube, YouTube, Twitch, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch, YouTube. It's a juggling act. Never mixer, never mixer. <laughs> Don't worry, Facebook Live stuff, nah. Don't worry about it. Just like a YouTube Twitch thing, you can join me in Discord. I let you guys know what's going on. One day a schedule will be put down, stamped with an approval. Once I can get that financial support to the point where I'm just like, hey, cool, I'm going to do this every day for a living. And then I'll be here every day with you guys chilling out. Now, that is my dream. Until then, we keep on doing what we need to do. We slog it out. We fight together as brothers in the trenches. You hear what I'm saying? I hope you got your beverages today. I have my beverage. Slancha. To my friends watching the Inside Star Citizen Review, those people that came live, awesome. Those people watching the replay that missed it, it's okay. Just make the next one. Just make the next one. We love you still. But the people that are live, we love you more. Families over here in effect. Yes, let's do it. Inside Star Citizen Review starts now. Putting down bitties. Well, I think this is basically an annual event that the Navy holds for people to get together and sort of send off new recruits who are Thank you, entering Fox. into military service. The origin of it dates back already to the First of Armed War, where they had to physically send a transport ship to go collect new recruits to join the service. Communities would come out and kind of celebrate I got the deuce chills. You know, all the people who were volunteering. And I got leaving. the deuce chills. But also, the Navy uses it as an opportunity to showcase some of the new ships that they've purchased for their fleet. Your tax money has gone to buying these ships, so you get an opportunity to see them up close. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of the, the things that's actually pretty exciting for me about the the Invictus in general is just the fact that this becomes our sort of weirdly unofficial first unveiling of the Navy inside the Persistent Universe. Hey, Z! It's Welcome been to such the stream, a large, dude. overwhelming part of oh. the Star Citizen history, and obviously Squadron 42 is very, very steeped in, in the Navy and its inner workings and stuff like that. <laughs> but in the PU, we've never really seen them. We've talked about them, we've heard about them, but you know, you don't really see them. So this is like a really cool opportunity to really kind of dive in and get that sort of sense of the military into the PU, which is really fun. All right, we know where to go. This is where we start out. We're going to have a fun little event here tomorrow, hopefully, for you guys that want to like join in. We're all just going to kind of rush the area here at Area 18, the convention center. And uh, hopefully we can make like a little fun video. And uh, if you guys have been watching the YouTube channel, I've been putting out the leaks as far as the javelin that you can see in game around the docking collars, the Idris, the fireworks. Fantastic. We talked about the Cutlass Blue earlier on stream today. We had a lot of fun today. The Bevic Convention Center came around kind of a happy accident because we needed a... Uh, we wanted to put some mega structures in Area 18 and not just kind of tall skyscrapers. So we came up with a the love this place. big round mega building yeah. and originally had no purpose. And then it just kind of seemed very natural for Dude. it to be a shopping center. Can I just say I love when they do these things? It makes the verse feel alive. Like I love these in-game events. I really hope that they do a lot of this as the game progresses and gets in a final state because this really makes the game feel alive. It doesn't feel static when you're in an environment where they're putting in these in-game events. It's it's wonderful. Keep doing it. I'm glad they do it. Or convention center to host events. So by the time the anniversary of 2019 came around, we decided let's host it there. Yeah. The UEE celebrates Invictus for sort of two reasons. It's a naval holiday that commemorates sort of the beginning of military service. So the kind of things we, we wanted to differentiate from the IAE is wanted to get a lot more of the law infused into the location, both visually right. and kind of nice. things to read and find out about that kind of sets it apart from a standard kind of man, a ship manufacturing display. 
And secondly, the Navy also uses Invictus as a way to showcase some of the ships that they've purchased yeah. over the past year. And yes. so they invite the oh. ship manufacturers to come. Nice. Manis, Connie's, Rovers. Models for the public to, to get a closer look at. I'm very excited right now. Like some of the pictures I leaked earlier on the channel, you check those out. Like it's fantastic what's coming, what's coming. I'm really, really excited. By the way, J Dub says, as a US sailor, I accept this naval holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this year is pretty exciting because the Navy just recently acquired. Oh, some I love this idea. Origins brown I love this brown hologram idea. G12. Tip on the giveaway. G12. That's one of the Rover is basically Origins entry into this market it's a i guess competitor to the ursa rover um, but this is classic origin good looking cool styling high quality it's essentially a two-man vehicle and the base version has capacity for two scu there are three variants of the g12 there's the base version there is the racer version which is for the enthusiast. And then Look we have the slick. third and final, which is the combat variant, which is why it's here at the show, it was built for the UEE. I'm sure the, the, the question will come up of origin and the Navy seems like an odd group uh, to, to come together. The thing to remember is that even though origin is known for luxury, they manufacture actually a lot of sort of military and law enforcement ships. You know, it's also probably, again, like the sheer quality of the workmanship, they tend to be pretty solidly made ships and they're well designed. I mean, they also just look cool as hell, which I feel like somebody, you know, they can justify it all they want, but- like, Oh yeah, they do. It's probably one of that things where like, the dude who first presented it was like, yo, this thing is sweet. I'm sure we can come up with a reason to have our admirals roll around in one of these things. <laughs> so in addition to the ship hulls uh, and or vehicle hulls as well, we have our sort of main floor of the Bevic Convention Center has been sort of converted into this sort of naval event space where we have uh, several different areas that people can go visit. As you kind of get off the transit shuttle in uh, at the Bevic Convention Center, you're kind of met with a historical timeline of the different dates and Ooh, events they added that the Invictus that. launch. So oh, I like that they added this. This is pretty sweet. Digging it. Digging that. The timeline. The timeline, I go over that on a video, by the way, like a, a lore video where we talk about that. And I actually talked about this uh, with Execute the other day and Seer. And we were talking about like the lore behind what was going, you know, Squadron 42 and how old it is dating back to the 2500s. I think it was Seer that I was talking to about this in the last podcast. And we were talking about how Squadron 42 uh, is is an infamous, just like amazing squadrons continuing to 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 own, <laughs> saving us many many times throughout the year. So Years. that's kind of a nice historical timeline that's very it. reminiscent of that's awesome. war memorials. And then that's as you awesome. go through into the lobby of the convention center, I met with a diorama of some uniformed uh, characters the banners. as another memorial. Oh and then yeah, kind of recruitment drive to kind of show the. That's awesome. That's awesome. These Digging are the kind it. of roles you could be serving in the uh, UEE Navy. And there's a plaque with an oath inscribed onto the marble there. Wow. And then as you go up the stairs, you're kind of met in the center with How a cool is that? quite a striking diorama. Some characters kind of climbing up a, a mountain precipice with yes. their arm reaching down to you. It's very much a kind of a propaganda recruitment kind of drive. Yeah saying come and join us the guy's reaching his hand hand out to you so i feel like some of this is going to be in squadron 42 like i feel like some of these actions that we're seeing right here memorialized are going to be in squadron 42 that would be awesome just like we saw in delamar with the statue of the guy who saved the boy you know when you go to delamar uh in levski like they're like i love how they incorporate the history into the game that's huge that's awesome or on hurston in the business district you know, and you got Big Daddy Hurston statue there. <laughs> like, I love, I love it. They really do a good job with the art and telling a story and putting the history in the game. And these live events as a combo is like a knockout punch. It's a kind of a nice moment for players to kind of look up and, you know, it'd be like a selfie opportunity and that kind of thing. And then we've got a special memorial for the 999 Squadron, which is kind of a nice little display with the 999. I don't know anything about the 999 Squadron. The Do you, ships. guys? 
And then there's a, an Invictus kind of diorama which shows just ships coming out of the logo wow. right into the space. And then all Holy around the lobby, God, there's that's banners awesome. and flags and everything kind of reinforcing that military kind of feel. So yeah, it's really actually fun that we now have basically a venue uh, that we can have. I'm, large I'm very excited. At, uh, awesome. Like convention center. But yeah, so basically it's like as we did it with IEE, like we get to do kind of a similar thing with the uh, Invictus. Well, there's more to see outside the convention center. There we but go. I don't think they're going to let me tell you what that is. Oh, we know. The players will have to discover it for themselves. There's the docking collar we showed today on the channel. Go to the YouTube channel if you want to know what this what's happening. But uh, above a Bagini uh, uh, a spaceport, they've got a huge docking collar on there. And uh, spoiler alert, there's going to be a Javelin docked in there, which looks amazing. By the way, it's a, it's a destroyer class ship, and the Idris is a frigate base ship and you can see the difference in sizing in the collar it's quite impressive and i had a great question uh in one of our videos a guy had said well how are they going to uh spawn in and spawn out in these locations with players who have larger ships and i think what will end up happening is when you request uh landing uh at areas that have these docking collars which will be far and few between i think we'll see these as systems spread out you'll see them in like really heavy dominated uee zones and you'll see like a docking collar on one or two different types of stations i don't think you're going to see player owned javelins everywhere as far as yeah i can see it's a very expensive <laughs> these large capital ships were very expensive to get and i think you're going to see a very amount of limited people that, that even want to take it out for you know can you imagine everybody and their mother's going to want to fly around this guy and they're probably going to want to take him out so you better be careful if you have a larger ship and so if you get in a situation you do have a larger ship and you do want to get in the docking collar i'm, I'm imagining when you request landing that if there are ships you know filled up in the docking collars that the larger npc uh cap ships will just kind of disengage from the collar and get out so that you can get in i'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna uh go tex that was a good question by the way that was a really 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 good question the guns on the javelin are ridiculous size nines on the turrets the four size nines starts tomorrow may 22nd with activities on spectrum and social media introduces us to new concept vehicles like the G12 Rover and the newly flyable Cutlass Blue. And there's something happening up in space. Check out the website to find out more, but before we let you go this week, here's the Sprint Report. <laughs> up first, Ross, yeah, let's dude. talk some Go No Go. Last Ooh. week, the Actor Feature team presented the very first Tier Zero implementation of body dragging for director and we talked about this with the Cutlass Blue as well. You know, like there was an enter feature. They didn't have the animation in the Cutlass Blue. I was a little bit upset about that. I talked about that this morning. That video, I think, will, be, will hit Saturday or Sunday on the channel. And I was like, nobody's going to voluntarily enter the little prison uh, capsules inside the Cutlass Blue. So there has to be some kind of game dynamics that allow you as a bounty hunter or as a police officer to get criminals into these capsules in the cutlass blue so you know i'm imagining something like this happening where you just put you have push pull mechanics and and it renders the the criminal kind of unable to move as you push them into the capsule that stuff does need to be in the game as far as i'm concerned you know when you have like that cat and mouse between pirates and bounty hunters when you capture these people the death mechanics need to be there so death has some type of consequence as well if there's no consequence uh involving the death mechanics uh we talked about a lot about that when the cutlass red came out that you're going to need these death mechanics in the game so that people feel like there's there's some type of culpability there's some type of uh um culpability uh you have to answer to the law I, I as a pirate as a person who likes to play on the shady side i'll tell you like i look forward to that cat and mouse between uh, bounty hunters and and pirates you know and if i were to get caught I get caught and I go to Klesher and and they and they pick up the bounty on me and I'm I'm cool with that. I dig that completely. Totally love those to review. Uh, now, law body based dragging mechanics. is a feature initially necessitated by work on Squadron 42, where the ability to both pull compatriots to safety and hide the bodies of subdued enemies are essential elements in progressing through the aspects of a campaign. But awesome. as with most this is things, great for me. Oh, work on uh, one uh, means uh, work on both. <laughs> And with the upcoming Alpha 3.10, this very first iteration of Body Dragon is a go. Now, with time between now and the patch release, the team will work to improve the grab you know. targeting.
they're going to improve the graphics too as this, the animations as this goes on. But this is awesome. This is great for field medics. You're a field medic. You need to get somebody out of the uh, area because they're critically wounded and you can get them back up in action. Awesome. 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 To accommodate for various armor types and minimize that space you're currently seeing between <laughs> player and target. But we've no doubt the shenanigans players will get up to when this feature makes its way to players in the upcoming Alpha 3.10. In ship news, there we go. Earlier this big talk this morning about the Cuddy Blue. Love the front cockpit, how it slopes down. Love the design, slightly different. A lot of people go, Oh, what's the big deal? What's the difference? Cuddy Blue, Cuddy Red, Cuddy Black. And we were talking how funny it was that Drake cornered the entire market, that they they sold the Cuddy Black first and said, Go ahead, go out and pirate, right? Pirates are, are out there, and people said, Wait, we need something to catch them with. So let's make the Cuddy Blue, right? So Drake's got the whole spectrum. Cuddy Blue goes after the Cuddy Black. Oh, there's some trouble. People shooting each other. You got hurt. Well, well, we got a cutty red for you. Drake might be the best manufacturer ever, covering all the bases. Covering all the bases. This week, the Cutlass Blue will be arriving into the hands of those players who'd pledged hey, for it previously in Alpha 391, while being made available for everyone else on Invictus Launch Week's Drake Day. So here's a brief look at what you can expect from Drake's law enforcement offering. And a quick look at the updated cockpit being worked on for the Origin M50 with its flashy new seat and slick updated cockpit lighting. In ship related mm -hmm. updates, the graphics team has been prototyping a new dynamic brightness feature for UI. There that we can go. Automatically adjust elements to a brighter level against brighter backgrounds. There we go. God, I can't tell you how long I've been asking for this. That UI is just so horrible off of Microtech. Like the like, and this is great news. Thank you, thank you, Cloud Imperium. Thank you. This is a fix that's needed to happen for a very long time. Golf clap, golf clap. Thank you, thank you. And then lower again against the darker elements of space. What you're seeing here is an early proof of concept work, but the next step will be to continue dialing in the proper levels of brightness among the various backgrounds players may find throughout the Persistent Universe. Finally, moving on to locations, we've got these images of additional work expanding the raceway and hangar areas of Grim Hex. Yeah! To provide new opportunities. We've been dying for this. Pirates all over are saying, Yarrr! It's about time. I love it. Hold on. I'm excited. players that operate outside the law. And as a special treat, this first look at the current state of Pyro 1 the planet charred by the constant violent solar flares of the Ooh. system stars pro all right all right prolonged nova phase now it's worth noting that the planet seen here is in both an early state and outside of the pyro system itself so let's take that work in progress down in the corner to heart see there it is still it's an exciting look at the different surface types and even plant life being explored for what was once thought to be a completely lifeless system. So what do we learn? This Adding more assets, you know, for planets that are more rocky as far as lava planets, lava-based planets, I'm sure like in future, uh, you know, as this progresses and they have to deal with planets that have like lava-based kind of hot planets that they're going to use some of these assets to, to kind of put all over the planet or moons that, that have this kind of environment. So let's see what we learned this week, everyone. This week. Well, we learned that the UE Navy, long associated with Squadron 42, is about to make its first presence felt in the Persistent Universe with Invictus. That in-game convention centers can be just as flexible in meeting the needs of any promotion as the ones we find in the real world. And that the Navy and Origin alike clearly think capable ground vehicles don't have to sacrifice sleek looks with the currently in development G12 rover. So be sure to log into the Persistent Universe tomorrow and each day of the following week to see everything we covered here and a few surprises we left for you to discover. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm here. Awesome. Huckabee. We'll see you next week. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm digging that. Now, for the giveaway, guys, let me tell you what's going on with the giveaway. I'm very excited to be showing you what's happening here. Um, let me get the let me make sure we can get all of this here. Boom 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 boom. And let's switch the display window so you guys can see what we are giving away. 
Yes. Yes. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are giving away here thanks to J-Dubs. And we got more after this. J-Dubs and Cash stepped up. These are for all of our backers this month. We, we have giveaways every single month for our backers. And it's because you guys are amazing that we're able to continue to do things like these. So first off, let's give a little golf clap here to J-Dubs and Cash for, for this month's giveaway. We're going to call the winner on June 7th. If you want to get involved with giveaways, just become a patron or push the join button on my YouTube uh, channel. We are giving away the G12A, which is that amazing black like the Omen. Awesome rover that you're seeing there. I think out of all the variants of the G12, the G12A makes most sense to me. Uh, you can see the interior here, which is really nice of this particular series. Uh, it's anti-air. Let's go down to it. There we go. It's it's slick. It's fast. It's got eight size two missiles in it. That's pretty. That's pretty badass. And then you lock it. You shoot it down. You go back. You reload. Eight new missiles, ready to go. So that's one. This is a seventy dollar plus value. Thank you, J Dubs, for doing this. And now, and now, for even more. Let me show you what else is on the platter here. Boom. For you, for you aficionados, for you ship collectors, right? I don't think this one's ever going to be offered again. This is awesome. We're giving away two of these things to Cash. Cash is giving away two P72 Archimedes in the Emerald. This is strictly for those uh, ship collectors. Those guys that like to just look at all the ships they have. This is like a ship that's not going to be made again. I dig it. The P72 Archimedes with the emerald skin. We're giving away two of those. Thank you, Cash. Thank you, J-Dubs. Boom. There's our th there's three prizes. And for our fourth prize, we're giving away a $25 Amazon gift card. We are stacked. We are stacked for the month of May. So, guys, I want to thank you guys for... I want to thank J-Dubs and Cash specifically. And uh, I also want to tell you guys, thank you so much for supporting this community. I love hanging out with you guys. I'm having a great time with you guys. Thanks so much. And we will call our winners to this somewhere around June 7th on our Patreon page and for a YouTube membership post. I had a wonderful, wonderful time today. Awesome time. Slancha, my friends. Slancha. Put slamming the, the it down here. Hold on a second. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Ah. All right, guys. This video will be released shortly to YouTube. I'll probably do another video or cut this video up in two so people know what the giveaway is. And uh, I want to tell you guys thank you so much for all the love and all the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you.